Hello and welcome to the Kids Okay Please live. Uh, we're live again on Kids Okay Please today with a very interesting guest. In fact, uh, today's conversation is going to be very uh, meaningful, informative, and a lot of fun. So uh, let me give you an introduction to what Kids Okay Please is. Kids Okay Please is an evolving privileged ecosystem that brings childhood worthy experiences, deals, venues on uh, human fingertips. Uh, through the intuitive use of technology. Uh, quickly getting on to introducing our Kids Okay Please Live. Kids Okay Please Live is a medium established to uncover the intel and insights about the ecosystem, parents, and uh, the ecosystem that parents and children occupy in the society, business, and our lives. Um, without any delay, we already have our guest, so we're going to um, add her. Uh, our today's guest is Miss Chantal Norton. I hope I spelled uh, that correct. And we're just waiting for her to log in. Hi, Hi Chantal. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Great, great. Hi. Hi. Can you, can you, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I'll just put my volume up a bit. I can hear you, yes. Okay, perfect. So uh, let me quickly starting by giving you a, in, an introduction and then we can move into the question answer round. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Perfect. So uh, our today's guest is Miss Chantal Norton. She is the founder of Sing Song Sign. As uh, interesting as that sounds, the conversation is going to be even more interesting when you know about it. Uh, she is originally from England. And uh, she's lived in Mumbai for the past 15 years and considers Mumbai as her home. Uh, she initially started Sing Song Sign to bring baby signing into moms in Mumbai. Um, and as she had experienced the amazing benefits of signing with her own daughter, uh, it opens the lines of communication with your child from as early as six months because they can talk to you without, with the use of signs uh, before their language develops. Um, it is immensely rewarding. It reduces frustration of the child and increases enjoyment uh, with the parent. Okay, I have introduced you. And Sorry, now we're going I don't to get the hands there. <laughs> reduce that's the right. noise. That's fine. That's fine. Perfect. So you're completely audible, and I can't wait to jump right into the conversation. So, uh, starting with my first question, what is Sing Song Sign? Okay, so Sing Song Sign is. Um, it's well, it's classes for mums and babies or parents and babies, I should say. Um, and Sing Song Sign teaches baby signing prim primarily, right. Right. and we teach it via using lots of songs, lots of puppets, lots of bubbles, and so on and so forth. So it's a musical class, and in that class, we teach parents how to use baby signs with their babies so that their babies can learn those signs and use them to talk back to the parents before they can even speak. So right. I have to naturally lead on to what is baby signing. So baby signing is a series of gestures which you learn and then you teach your child. And your child learns these gestures and uses them to talk back to you using their hands before they can speak. And um, what is the benefit of this? Well, you're opening up language, you're opening up two-way conversation with your child long before they'd actually be able to talk to you using words. When right. you think about it, a baby can speak maybe two to three words when they're one years old, usually dada, mama, something like that. By right. the time they're 18 months old, they'll have about 10 words. And by the time they're two years old, typically around 50 words. That's a very long time for them to be able to tell you that they want more roti, where's daddy, <laughs> um, want to go home now. It's a right. very, very long time. And so how do right. they communicate with you? They cry. And that's very wearing. It's wearing a baby too. They cry and you think, oh, what's wrong? Is it nappy? Is it, do they need more milk? Um, are they wet? Are they cold? Are they hungry? Are they tired? Are they overexcited? But by having signs, you have a window into their mind. So how do we teach baby signs? Well, it's actually very natural. Babies naturally use gestures to communicate with their parents. So uh, for example, they'll reach for something that they want or they'll push away something they don't want. Right. Or when they are around seven, eight, nine months old, they learn to point. That's, that's a yeah. real milestone for them. This, 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 this is what I want. Or what is it? Um, so they're naturally using gestures. 
all we're doing is giving them more gestures and saying this is what they mean. And we always speak when we sign. So a very easy early example, from, even from a very small baby, if you use the sign milk, when you're going to give your baby milk, your baby quickly associates this gesture with getting milk. So even a three, four month old baby who cannot yet copy this gesture will calm down when you see, see them crying for milk and you say, milk, I'm just gonna get your milk whether it's bottle or breastfed, whatever, but yes, yes, I've understood. We're going to have milk and the baby will just calm down because they know when mommy does this and says that word, milk, means that the stuff I like is coming. Um, babies usually can start signing back around six months old, approximately, but it depends when you start signing up with them, but we'll come on to that, I guess, as part of the talk. So that's what Sing Song Sign is. And because we use a lot of songs and have a lot of fun in our classes, it's actually a great time to bond with your baby as well. So that sing song sign. It sounds great. In fact, I never knew the concept of baby signing. I never knew there was something as, you know, having signs with your child. And it's such a beautiful concept for all the parents to actually connect with their children in that way. So actually, my next question was right onto the age group. Like what age do we actually look at when it comes to teaching science? Do we, do we stop at any particular age for that? Um, the age you would stop is if your child is clearly communicating everything they want to say, then there's no need for baby signing. But okay. it can even help a child who is learning to talk in the transition, transition to speaking, so toddlers. Right. Right. So, you know, there's plenty of children who attend the class up to about two and a half to three. Um, right. They are beginning to speak, but sometimes it helps to clarify their speech. So um, an example, I don't know, I, I'm picking random examples here, but, but uh, well, a nice one actually was a child who was afraid of the noises outside the window, did not have enough words to say, I'm scared of the noises outside the window. But there yes. was the siren going past, that police siren, Nina, Nina. Yes. And her mother had noticed that she had associated that with an elephant. So whenever she heard it, she would do the elephant sign. So this Ooh. baby was not sleeping and mommy's like, what's the matter? And the baby pointed to the window and did the elephant sign. So mother was like, oh, it's the elephant sound that you are afraid of and you're not sleeping. So she shut the window, baby went to sleep. So that's an example of using it when you haven't got enough words. Another one would be if the child is, you know, um, perhaps wants the ball, let's say, I mean, ball's actually quite an easy word, but say they want the ball and they can't articulate it clearly, by yeah. signing the ball, it clarifies what they want. There's a lot of words, actually, which can sound like other words. So as yeah. they're, I mean, usually one's mother understands, right? But not everybody else in the family is going to understand what you're wanting. So if you can True. clarify it with a sign, then, you know, job done. In terms of when to start when they're small, some people start straight away when they're born. Um, but it depends on your patient's level. Usually it takes between six to 12 weeks for your baby to start signing back to you if we're using the okay. sign regularly and, you know, really using it a lot. Um, when you think about it, how often, how many words we hear before we learn to speak. So that's actually quite fast, six to 12 weeks. Yeah. Um, and it depends on their age. If they're nine months old, they're going to pick up a sign much quicker and they're already able to manipulate their fingers. Yeah. Um, so usually we say start about six months because then you're going to get a result in two to three months after that so that you feel motivated. But you can start right from the beginning if you want to get into practice doing the signs. And I've seen videos of a baby as young as three months old signing milk, um, a baby five months old signing up. That means I want to be picked up. It's ever so cute. And oh, yeah, there was one video on YouTube of a baby three months old who was signing up. Mommy had taught the sign for up. Baby had cracked it and was doing this up sign. I mean, he wasn't able to isolate the fingers at three months, but he was able to do like this. Yeah. So and communicate clearly. And the mother was like, I'm exhausted. I've been carrying around my child all day because every time I put him down, he does this and he signs up because I taught him, but it's his first word to me. How can I ignore it? <laughs> so that was it's, a lovely little story. It's adorable. In fact, I didn't ask you how you uh, got into the concept of baby signing. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, actually, um, I had my daughter here in India. She's now six and a half. So that was six and a half years ago. And um, around eight months, when she was eight months old, a friend of mine gave me a baby signing video. It was one from the UK. Mm -hmm. And that's all I had to go on. And it's quite difficult. You learn the signs from a video. That's quite straightforward. You just copy the signs. But then how do you use them? So I got another book from uh, Amazon. I got a book on it. I read up on that. But it really took me quite a while to click how to best use them with my child. 
but we managed and I didn't perhaps have full faith in it because I didn't have a teacher to say, keep going, you're doing great, this is how long it's gonna take. But 11 months old, she was looking out of the window and she turned around from the window and did this, which is the sign for bird. And I was okay. like, oh, there's a bird outside the window. And I went to look and there was a green parrot. And had she just pointed, I wouldn't have known what she was pointing at. He was hiding sure. in the banana tree. He was kind mm. of just over there. But because she signed bird, I was looking for the birds. And we had this amazing moment of, oh my God, you just told me that you saw a bird out the window. So that was her first word to me, apart from my mama, was <laughs> bird. She was sharing that moment that she'd seen a bird. And that's, they call that like the golden moment. The first time your baby signs back to you, it's like, wow, they're actually now communicating with me. It's now coming into two-way communication. And uh, a lot of my moms do my courses. They share that first uh, moment with me where they just tell me what happened and everything. Um, but they all find it terribly exciting. That first sign <laughs> is just like magical. You know, your baby has finally been able to connect with you. Yeah. Oh my God, this sounds great. In fact, the concept of baby signing, and I, in fact, was uh, very curious about this, that how, how do children really understand uh, your signs when it comes psychologically? Because when you're talking to them, when there's words, they can communicate back to you to the limit. So how do they, you know, really communicate back to you with the so, sign? Yeah, I mean, in terms of when you're teaching baby signs, when you're yeah. using signs with baby, you still have to speak because we want them to learn yeah. to talk. Um, yeah. Now, but when you think about it, imagine you go to Spain and, um, you know, you ask for directions, okay? Uh, maybe that's not a good idea. You say you want to have some coffee, milk with your coffee. And the poor waiter's okay. trying to understand. And he's, he's basically using all these words and you haven't got a clue which one is the word for milk. And he's asking okay. you sugar, um, you want it stronger, you want milk, but you don't know what the word milk is. It's leche in no. Spanish, but you don't know that. You're just hearing all these words in this babble and you don't have a clue. Um, whereas in this case, we're saying, we use the signs very specific. We say milk, would you like some milk, for example? And then when your baby's having the milk, you say milk, you say I'm sort of feeding my baby here, milk, you're having milk. So you're connecting that right. word, that sign. It's like a triangle. There's what you're talking about. There's the spoken word and there's the signed word. Or another example, I kept one handy here, ball, okay? So the sign for ball is like this. So you'd say, shall we play with the ball? <gasps> look, I've got the ball. Are you going to catch the ball? They catch the ball and then you say, ball, you've got the ball. And that word starts popping out of the sentence, ball, ball, you've got the ball. And that sign is always coming. Every time you're playing with the ball, you're using the sign. And so the baby able, is able to connect a gesture much faster than the word. The um, word. And that's how it helps them. And uh, yeah, picking that word out of the sentence you asked me something else and i've forgotten what it was i think i missed uh, part of the question I, I think i think it was this i just wanted to know that how is it do they pick up uh the gestures and the words faster okay. than they yeah. actually can so um a baby is able to use their hands quicker than they can use their voice their vocal actually right. the yeah the baby's vocal tract is not developed if you look at a neanderthal man apparently did not speak because the shape literally the shape of his vocal uh, tract did not permit speech did not permit all the different sounds that we have today we have a more okay. upright long uh, speech canal now when yes. the baby is small the priority is milk and breast milk there's a sucking action so yes. the, the the gullet is not shaped yet perfectly for speech they can make sounds and they can babble but it's not yet developed so they will come to speech as they literally have the space to start speaking right um, which starts around as early as coming up to about 18 months old, but um, I'm not sure exact, exact month or whatever. So, um, but gestures they can use naturally right from the beginning. And usually when they start copying back, it's quite approximate because a gesture has three parts to it. It has, okay. I'll use the sign for rabbit, here's rabbit. So you've got a movement, the fingers are doing this. You've got the placement of the okay. hand. You've got the shape of the hand. That's a lot to take in. So a baby who's signing rabbit usually might do something like this, usually off to the side because they have nowhere, no idea where their body is. I mean, right. this, the parasitical sense takes time to develop. So they might just do it out here. But okay. if you're signing rabbit with your child and you're seeing them looking at you and doing something with really? their hand, they are trying to copy back. And in our classes, we use a lot of the classic nursery rhymes like open, shut them, open, shut them. 
why the bobbin up clap 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 all this clapping hand waving opening shutting the child starts to copy those back which is all about the motor control and as they gradually gain motor control they're able to sign back to you but this milk one's quite easy you know so even a very small baby is used to grasping things from about three months old they can actually hold a rattle I don't think they can let it go at will, but they can hold it. So this is a very easy sign for them. And yeah, we call it approximation. So when babies start signing, they're going to approximately sign. So the sign for water is like this. It's three fingers and you tap it on your chin. But the baby, okay. if they're signing for water, is probably going to just do this because they can't yet. I mean, it's quite complicated. They can't yet do that. But you would sign consistently and they would copy back as best as they could. Like, ball's actually quite easy. You're just moving your hands yeah. together. So clap. And if you're, you know, there's a little bit of guesswork in the beginning. Um, you know, which sign is my baby signing to me? Um, are they just clapping or they're saying ball? Well, you can find it. The ball, if the eyes light up, yes, that was the ball they wanted. But they couldn't say ball. Right. And right. then gradually they get better and better at it. One of the little girls on my last course was learning monkey. And I got the cutest video said, but she's literally sitting at the table and she's doing this with her hand. And she doesn't know how, because monkey's like this. It's like you put your hands under your, it's like you're scratching your armpits. Yeah. And she's literally doing this. I can hear the mummy laughing on the video. And she's trying to figure out how to do it. It's ever so cute. And then two months later, she's cracked it. And she's got it really well. Um, but yeah, you can recognize their signing attempts. And that's part of what we cover on the course as well. What to look for when your baby starts to talk back to you. They actually start, if you're signing a lot with them, just like they do verbal babbling, they start doing hand yeah. babbling, which is literally they start looking at their hand and trying things out because they've seen you using their, your hands. Mm -hmm. And this is same as happens to uh, deaf children who are signed with. Um, they copy the gestures, actually a lot earlier than speaking babies. They copy the gestures that their parents are making to them, which uh, brings me on to a very important thing, which uh, a question that a lot of people ask, and I'll just address it, that one. Um, Will signing with my baby delay speech? And I need to just address it because it always comes up. And the answer is no, it will not delay speech. It'll actually accelerate their language development. They'll have access to use those words. And by the time they come to speak, it's just a matter of uttering the word. But they can already say more roti or where is daddy or want to go home, you know, sign for home and signs like that. Um, and they have done an experiment about 10 years ago and they split into control group and babies who were signed with and they tried as best as possible to control for all the other factors that could affect. And they found the babies who were signed with, by the time they were three years old and speaking, had a spoken vocabulary that was 11 months ahead of the other group. So almost okay. to the vocabulary of a four-year-old because they had been able to use language earlier than the babies who were not given sign language. So it doesn't make them speak particularly faster, at least Scientifically, they say not, although I've seen a lot of our babies do make speech attempts earlier because they're anyway doing this. So now they're going to add blah, 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 trying to say the word ball because they know they're getting understood. Um, but it does mean by the time they come to speak, they have a lot more language. And the great thing about it is it reduces the frustration as well because you're not having to guess what your baby needs. Your baby's not frustrated because they're getting understood and that makes them feel wonderful. And you're not getting frustrated because you're not having to guess all the time what your baby wants. And you can encourage them and say, use your hands to talk to me. And by giving them those signs, it just gives you a vocabulary between you as well. So we have a lot of signs around bath time, for example, such as splash, you know? So the baby may do like this because he wants you to splash, or you may do like this yes. and your baby may splash. And he's understanding the spoken word, but he can't say it yet. You can say it but he can say it with his hands, let's splash, let's play, et cetera. So yeah, this is, um, this is how it's used. So actually I was coming to my next question being about language, but I also have one more question which states that what is the transition uh, time that it takes from signing to language? How much, approximately. Do you mean signing to spoken language? Yes, spoken language. Yeah, it tends to be about the normal, the normal, um, timeline Thank because you. um again you're waiting you know baby has to practice those vocal sounds right. um so it does not accelerate their spoken language but when they come to speak they have a much bigger vocabulary so they'll be speaking in much in you know proper sentences much earlier than a baby who doesn't sign simply because they already know how to say um you know 
let's go home. So they put those two, two right. words, words together. They've already put two words together far earlier than they could have done waiting for speech when they first have to say <laughs> one word and then eventually put the two together. So um, language comes, usually you are going to have a baby talking about 50 words by two years old. Babies who sign do tend to have a few more words simply because they've been able to get hold of words sooner and use words sooner. But right. that's not something we can promise because everybody, baby takes their own time when it comes to spoken language. But in terms of using language, which actually is the critical thing. Um, you know, when we talk about babies with speech delay, the, the thing that is not good about speech delay is their inability to communicate. It's cool. not, you know, they're gonna eventually learn to speak unless there's some underlying condition. So that's not the issue. The issue is they can't connect in the same way that babies that can speak can connect. Right. So, you know, if they're having baby signing, they have a way to connect. So the delay is not delaying any of the mental capacity. Plus, um, signing, along with speaking, um, it fires off two different areas of the brain. So it actually right. wires up the brain um, mm. even better than just speaking, for example. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it doesn't accelerate spoken language, but it accelerates language and being able to use language. And that's the most important thing. Right. So uh, coming on to my next point, and this is actually a point I would like to make uh, to everyone who's watching that we're soon going to have Sing Song Sign on our uh, platform as well. And in fact, you are coming up with uh, classes, if you could tell us about. Yeah, so I have a workshop. And that is a one hour workshop, which gets you started in baby signing. So in that workshop, we teach about 15 baby signs and how to sign with your baby, the benefits of it, why it's good, how to sign with your baby, and um, some tips and tricks to really sort of help you go along. And it also gives you a chance to experience the format, the online format, uh, which is of course a little yeah. different than being a physical class. Yeah. And then we also have the eight week uh, intro, introduction to baby signing, no, hang on, baby signing basics course. And that's a once a week class. And we support you with, you have a live WhatsApp group, a live WhatsApp group, a live Facebook group, sorry. Um, you get access to the replay. So you have the actual class, but if you want to watch that two, three times throughout the week and do the songs with your baby and so on, you get those replays available for a whole week after each class. Um, you get a weekly handout, you get a little two minute video, which just recaps all the signs so you can quickly learn those and remember those. And I think, you know, apart from the actual classes themselves, having that WhatsApp group is a lot of support because um, I ask people to check in, how is it going? Do you have any questions? You know, so of course, not being in a physical classroom, we don't have as much two-way because in, when you use Zoom, you cannot have all the microphones on, it just doesn't work. Sure. Um, but the WhatsApp group sort of compensates for that. But what is interesting about the online course is that because you're in the comfort of your own home with no distractions, it's just you and your baby enjoying. Um, I found that mothers have been able to concentrate and learn how to sign with their babies much, perhaps much quicker, much better, much deeper than in a physical class. Because in a physical class, it's great fun, but there's a lot of distractions. This baby may be crying, you didn't quite catch what was said, or your baby suddenly needs attention and you can't pay attention to what's being said, or you missed that. Whereas at home, when you've got the replays as well, you can really absorb that. Plus, um, the replays are great because uh, one mummy was telling me from my last batch, that she would do the class once with her baby and then grandma would do the class again. So grandma got to learn the signs and she got to learn the signs. And baby got both parents, sing, or both uh, carers, singing and um, interacting with her. And grandma's also using the signs in context. So baby's gonna pick up on them very fast. And the last group we had phenomenal results. We had, um, it was about two thirds. It was, I'd say about 70, 75% of babies signed by the end of the course. I expect them all to sign by around three months. But by the end of eight weeks, we had about 70, 75% signing, which was like, wow. And some of them were really signing up a storm. I mean, one of them was up to 20 signs. It was like, whoa, that was fast. So, um, yeah, yeah, like that. Right. So I hope everyone's got that because we're going to soon have their classes on our platform along with our memberships. And uh, a few more questions that I have for you right now. Uh, so that people have a little more clarity. So sing song sign. Does it go with as it says? Is it singing the songs? H how is it conducted? Oh, why is it called sing song sign? Well, I've seen some baby signing courses where they just tell you about how to sign with your baby and that's fine. 
Um, but this, the singing part is really powerful because, you know, singing with your child is one of the best things you can do with your child um, because it's got that song rhythm. It's got intonation. It's got the language. It's got the connection with your baby. You're using facial expression. You're using the signs. It helps you remember the signs as well. So the way we do our classes is we usually start with a welcome song. We welcome all the na babies by name. We sing their names because it's important for them to hear that. And I'm told by the mothers, even, of course, in the physical class, I could see the babies react. But um, in the Zoom class as well, the babies still react when they hear their name, son, like, oh, well, that's me, right? <laughs> um, and then uh, we usually do the main part of the lesson sort of fairly up front to get the, if there's any theory part, out of the way. And we do a lot of songs, and we use the songs to practice the signs. So we might be doing one week about mealtimes. So there'll be songs about eating. There'll be songs about asking for some more. There'll be songs um, about saying all done, about my little frog. He's hungry. He wants something to eat, so he wants a dosa. I have lots of puppets. These are my, uh, I'll show you some of my guys. This is a little tiger, and he shows up every week. Say hi, little tiger. Okay. <laughs> and this little frog. And he, he does a lot of our songs with us. Hi. Okay. Like bind the bobbin up. He does that with us. And he claps. And sometimes he signs too, don't you? You want to teach him the sign? Which one do you want to do? Eat. Yeah, that's right. The sign for eat. We were learning the sign for eat. Ooh. So he helps us learn our signs. And he's, he's quite like a toddler because you know, he's not able to articulate his fingers yet. Yeah. Just his conversations. Yeah. <laughs> so say bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we use all these guys to sort of help move the class along so a lot, a lot of puppets and a lot of songs you'll already know nursery rhymes the classics monkeys jumping on the bed and so on yeah. but also a lot of songs that you don't know um some you know i've scoured uh itunes and spotify for all the best nursery rhymes i happen to know a lot because i used to teach dance and teach babies and know a lot of nursery rhymes before but even i found some new ones so every week i was looking at it the other day you learn about four or five uh new songs every single week so your repertoire grows and i share the playlist so you can actually just you know play those with your child during the week and sing along to them right. because there's a lot of music out there but i think a lot of people are listening to choo choo tv and you know on youtube and these sort of ones and for me personally i don't find them uh, melodic enough i find them very synthetically created so the songs i'm using are all um Oh, real instruments and baby paste, you know, a lot more of the voice, less of this instrumentation that sort of gets in the way. You know, for babies, you want to slow it down. You want it to be calm. You want it to be gentle. Um, and even how I leave the classes, I mean, we're chatting up a storm here, but in classes, I slow down, pace it as if the babies are actually in the room with me um, so that there's that calm voice because Zoom is a very, well, online uh, uh, classes. Cool can be very, very jarring. And my daughter does some. And it's like, whoa, this is coming into my living room. So it's very important that the person on the other end is conscious of that and really um, thinking of how it comes through on the other side. So, um, so far, so good. I think, I think I'm doing okay. The parents say it comes across very well. So, yeah. True. So one concern that uh, usually comes up is the screen time. And the, the, and the children, the age group that we are dealing with is actually pretty small. So how do we manage the screen time with the kids? Yeah. So, yeah, that gets asked a lot, actually. And some parents don't want to give their child screen at all. That's absolutely fine. I've had um, a couple of twins do it in the last batch. They were six months old and mummy and daddy didn't really want to have screen time. Well, at six months, it was quite controllable because baby was in the little uh, chair facing mummy and mummy was facing the screen and then singing with the baby and looking at me beyond. Um, but really, the class is designed, even for babies who move around a bit, is designed for you to interact with your baby. So I tell parents, sit on the floor comfortably with your child, put a few toys around, put the screen over there out of reach so you can see it, and, so, and put your baby so that they can see you. Because when you start singing the songs, your baby's going to look at you, they're not going to look at me. The slightly older ones do turn around and glance at the screen, but babies are very active. And this is why I say do not pin your child in a, in a chair, God forbid you strap them in. Um, you know, they need to be able to move around the room. They're paying attention, even the toddling ones. They are paying attention, but they're not staring at the screen the whole time. Screen time is not actually bad for babies if the parent is there and interacting with the baby. Imagine you're looking at a book and you see a cow and you say, look, there's a cow. What does the cow say? The cow says, mmm. 
And if you're doing baby sign, you'll do the sign for cow like this, like you do the horns. It's the same thing. You snap up the book on the screen and you're saying, look, what's that on the screen? There's a frog. Did you see the frog? What does the frog say? Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Come on then, let's do wind the bobbin up. And I'm singing and you're singing with your child. So yeah. now the baby is not zoned out. They're not hypnotized by the screen. They are engaging with you and they may turn around and look at me, but yeah, and they're not mostly watching me. They're watching their moms and that's what needs, or moms or parents, whoever's doing the class with them. And that's what needs to happen. So, um, yeah, so it's actually a positive thing to do with your child. If you're not sure, come along for a workshop, try it out, see how it works for you. A lot of parents say the main issue is the child wants to grab the phone or the iPod or the laptop. So it's like the best thing you do is telecast it to your television so it's really out of the way or just put it up on the table where they can't reach. Nice. And then, yeah. So, um, but most people said it worked. It worked. It worked just fine. Even those who were not wanting any screen time, so it's fine. And there was one 11 month old mother didn't want him to watch the screen. He didn't really look at it. He was more interested in mummy doing all the songs. So, yeah. So it does also happen that way. That we can mm -hmm. have it without the screen time for all the parents who are worried about the screen time for their kids, which is wonderful because the main focus over here is for the mother and, um, the child and the parent to develop the connection. Yeah. So uh, coming to my next question, in fact, is how much time, effort, and um, what is expected from the parent out of this? Because it's a complete parent-oriented um, activity that is supposed to be taken out. So can you tell us more about that? Yeah, um, yeah, it can feel like, oh my God, what if there's one more thing I have to do? Yeah, I can see, yeah, that's a very valid question. Actually, it's very easy because what we teach you in the class is how to integrate it into your daily routines. So you're anyway giving the baby milk, so now let's just sign milk. It's time for bath, so say, let's go and have a bath and use the sign for bath like this. Come on then, let's go and have a bath. So it, it plugs into all these points of your day and we don't give it to you all at once. Every week we give you another area to plug in a few signs. So the songs are great because they give you a time when you can actually be singing with those signs to remember the signs but in terms of using them with your baby it's very straightforward it's just the first couple of days you may feel a bit weird you know it's kind of like it's just um, you know is, is my baby even looking at me um, what's my husband thinking and my mother-in-law is definitely thinking and I've gone completely boggled now um you know so <laughs> that's the, yeah that's the mental barrier but once you've been doing it for a couple of days it's easy and if there's any dissenters in the family who say what are you doing we didn't do this when you were a child and you turned out fine once they see the baby signing back, they are right in there wanting to sign for the child too because they want to have that connection too with your child. So um, it can feel like you're doing it all by yourself until you get that first sign, um, you know, in terms of the other members of the family maybe not joining in. However, because, this, because the class is online, daddy's around. So daddy yes. often sits there, joins in, and I have, I'd say about 50% of the last batch we had daddy's in the class also because it's a really nice time to sit you know sitting on the floor with baby you have that 45 minutes where there's nothing else that you're doing you're just doing this lovely interactive time with your child and you're allowed you don't have to finish that thing off for work or go and you know i don't know tell didi what to cook in the chick in the kitchen or whatever all those multiple things mothers have to do you've allocated the sit down time to sit and do that class um so it works well yeah Perfect. So this sounds great. And in fact, before um, I get on to our next question, I would like to tell everyone who's watching that if you all have any questions, doubts or queries or anything you would want to ask us, you can put it down in the chat box right now. In fact, we do have a question as well. Uh, let me direct that to you. Um, any tricks to make them stop crying at night? So kids tend to cry at night um, a lot. Any, any tricks, any suggestions for that? Yeah, you could sing with them. You can sing, um, you can sing some nursery rhymes with them. Not in that kind of panic, please stop crying sort of way. But if you have a few songs that baby enjoys singing, it can be very calming for the child. Um, usually if they're crying at night, it's because they're tired and they need to sleep. That's often, you know, if they're not hungry and they're not um, distressed, it, it, it can be just tiredness. Um, also, um, so there may be an underlying reason for the crying or because they don't want to go to sleep. I mean, remember that... Going to sleep is the end of a whole day, especially the slightly older toddlers. It's like they can resist right. sleep because, hey, I was having so much fun and now I have to sleep and I have to say goodbye effectively. 
I mean, we say to goodbye to each other when we go off to the land of sleep. We have literally departed from each other. So, you know, be sympathetic to that. Sing with your child, cuddle your child. Um, definitely singing helps a lot because it's that interaction with your little one. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'd have to understand the full context of crying, um, but uh, I would say, yeah, definitely singing is a help. Right. That is why I think a lot of people say that singing to the child or saying stories to the child at night before sleeping really calms them down and puts them off to sleep pretty well. Just knowing that there is someone um, with you. So uh, yeah. getting on to our last question, in fact, and I think we've covered most aspects of this conversation for everyone who's watching. I hope you'll have taken back a lot of important parts of this conversation because I have and uh, it was a very interesting conversation. How do you think we... As kids, okay, please, can be a part of your journey and help you spread this entire thing. How, how can we be a part for you? Oh, I don't really know. <laughs> I mean, uh, you've got a platform where you are, you know, creating a lot of interesting content and, you know, interviewing a lot of, I've seen on your platform, a lot of interesting interviews and bringing that to parents. So, yeah, it's just a matter of spreading the word. And I think, you know, with baby signing, it is one of those things that, I mean, I heard of it from somebody else who had right. done it with her child and said, this looks like a good idea. In fact, she, she was doing it with her child, but her friend in UK was doing it and had done it and said, it's a great thing to do. So it's one of those things which is very much word of mouth, you know, mothers tell other mothers and so on. Um, yeah, um, I know. <laughs> I don't know what else you could support, but we can find out ways for sure. Mothers have a pretty good circle that way. So you get to know a lot within uh, the mother. So that's a great idea, in fact. And now that we're listing down your classes, it's going to be even more available for everyone who's watching it, along with our memberships, in fact, because our memberships are live for everyone who's watching again. Uh, so I guess we're in, on an end of this conversation. It was a lovely conversation. Is there something that I must have missed out and you would want to put light to anything that you would want people who are watching to know? Um, I don't think so. I think we've probably covered, we covered. of course, it's yes. more if people have questions that I'm fine, I'm ready to answer. Um, I don't think we really missed anything out. I think, I think we pretty much covered yeah. the, the main, the main points of what is baby signing and why it's good right. for your child. And, right. But I think really you sort of have to come along and like do a workshop and really discover just how magical it can be to, you know, learn those signs and to do the singing with your child. Um, it's all about connection and, you know, communication is at the heart of child development. A child who's not communicated with does not develop as well. It's as simple as that. You know, sometimes late talkers are literally because they haven't had heard enough words. You know, parents have been busy, left with Diddy, Diddy's not talking to baby, baby talks, like that does happen. Um, right. You know, parents who are communicating a lot with their children, the more you speak with your children, the more they're going to develop. Um, we all need stimulus to actually right. develop. Right. So, yeah. So I think that's the, that's the, past, the, the, the parting thought in a way. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So I think we've covered on everything. Uh, just a few pointers, just to sum it up uh, before we leave is that what I have understood and what I'm really taken back by is that sing sign song. Sing song sign. Sing song sign. <laughs> sing, song, sign. So sing, song sign is basically uh, where your child learns languages. Oh, so sign, your child learns signs before learning languages. And I think it's a beautiful way for parents to associate with their children and give them a better vocabulary in the coming years. Um, it was amazing talking to you. Thank you so much, Shandal. If there's anything I missed out, I don't think we have. I think we've pretty much covered everything in the conversation. Yeah. Um, they can actually, if people are watching and they want more information, you can go to my website, which is www.singsongsign.com. Um, and that has a lot of information also that you can also have a look at um, if you want to sort of revisit what we've talked about. Um, and also they can also PM me, you know, and ask for some more details and so on. That's also there. Yeah. Perfect. So we're going to have this conversation right on, on our platform uh, for everyone who's watching and they can uh, go right in and see it. Your classes will be available on our platform again. Um, your classes, your upcoming classes, along with our memberships that are already live. 
uh, so thank you so much and thank you for being a part of this platform we're going to have you a lot more um, in the coming months and the coming times i hope you're safe and uh, it was an amazing conversation yeah thank you thank you for having thank me for today thank you, thank so you. okay all right bye 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 thanks everyone for watching bye thank you bye